let's suppose you have some therapeutic agent and it so happens that this drug is somehow cures some disease. Everybody is happy but you want to know how it works or what amino acids form the active site in order to improve its biological action. One of the options is photoaffinity labeling that helps us to identify a target protein of a given ligand molecule. How does it work? Idea is very simple. We just take our ligand and modify it in a way that it can be converted into a highly reactive intermediate by irradiation after its binding to a protein is complete. This reactive intermediate forms a covalent bond with the protein in its active site. The photogenerated species are usually so reactive that they can react with carbon-hydrogen bonds, so there is no need for the presence of a particular functional group at the binding site for the photogenerated intermediates to react and form a covalent bond with. Identification component is needed for the detection and isolation of probe protein adducts. You can use fluorescent dye, a radioisotope or a partner for a specific binding event. The length of the linker groups between functional parts of this system is a key component in photoaffinity probes. If the linker will be too short, it may lead to the probe cross-linking with itself, while too long linker may place the photoreactive group at too great distance to capture the target protein efficiently. The main drawback of photoaffinity labeling experiments is the photooxidative damage of proteins at short wavelengths due to the direct reaction of excited chromophores in the protein, such as tryptophan, with oxygen or because of the generation of oxygen radicals by the photolabeling agent in the sample. Some photolabeling agents may cause problems at wavelengths in the visible region. Photooxidative damages include cross-linkings of proteins and the loss of binding capacity of proteins for ligands. One way of overcoming this problem is to pass a stream of water-saturated nitrogen or argon to remove dissolved oxygen in order to reduce the level of such photooxidative damage. If you want a detailed review of this technique with photoreactive moieties used and detection isolation tags added, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Good luck.